good morning one and all welcome to my today's class we shall start with lesson number 8 of standard 10th a village cricket match written by ag macdonald the author ag macdonald is known as the author of the novel in english the author of novels is known as the author of novels in english in the present story he narrates the match that was held between a team organized by london editor and a village cricket team played in an english village so this is about the author coming to the lesson there are two teams the scottish team and the english team the two teams are named as the invaders and the warriors of fordenden invaders and warriors of fordenden or you can say the scottish and the english team in the scottish team here to understand the lesson uh, you have to know which player is uh, playing under which team so children you make a list of the names in your book so that you will understand the lesson better you make the list of names like for example in the scottish team who are the players in the scottish team livingstone pollock southcote hodge who is the captain the youth in the blue jumper the major boon ogilvy professor ballistics wicket keep the wicket keeper so here these are the players in the scottish team and uh, in the english team mr harcourt who is said to be the sexton the postman joe the blacksmith bill the baker who is the runner the baker is the runner so you should have a clear idea as to which player is under which team so make a list of the names just before you start with this video keep the textbook before you refer paragraph wise so let us start with the lesson here the lesson begins with the crisis were desperate the lesson is in beginning in such a way the crisis was a desperate all players were excited if you see the first paragraph of your textbook the crisis was desperate all the players were excited the batsmen were ready to bat the players that is the fieldsmen the fielders are moving nearer and nearer to the batsman mr shakespeare breathed he was breathing breathed b r e a t h e d breathed so loudly that one could hear his breathing sound his breathing was so loud that we could hear it one could hear it was present there mr southcourt who is said to be calm also discarded the grass he was chewing steadily so in this paragraph it is said that mr southcourt was chewing a grass so he discarded the grass mr hodge of course you know mr hodge is the captain he goes out and brings major for fielding so this is the first point just see to the second point in the second paragraph it is explained about the batsman the batsman are of course batting and are ready to score the runs so in the batting section we see two of them sexton that is mr harcourt and joe that is the postman sexton is an old person and the postman is a government employee so just keep this in mind sexton is 
Mr. Harcourt is a sexton, he is an old person and the postman, he is a government employee. Here, postman being a government employee does not want to take any risk. Also, sexton because of his old age doesn't take any risk. So, though runs can be scored, they were not ready to make runs because they didn't want to take the risk. The game simply continues without any runs made by both of them. Finally, the postman hits the ball and he hits the ball so hard that the ball goes near Pollock. Mr. Pollock picked the ball and threw it at the wicket. There were two overthrows here in the game which is mentioned in paragraph 2. Coming to the third point, the scores were equal and wickets were to be taken. You know how anxious the people, the viewers are, the audience are to watch this match. The viewers are anxiously waiting to watch this match and you people are very much interested in cricket. So here in the third paragraph they have mentioned that uh, the scores are equal and the wickets were to be taken. There was silence. The gaffers, the gaffers are the elderly people of the village who had come to see the match. Gaffers they are called. They had come to watch the game. So the elders sat in an inn, a small hotel where they sat. The name of that inn was Three Horse Shoes. Three Horse Shoes. This can be asked for one mark. Name the inn, the Three Horse Shoes. The elders of the village, the gaffers who came to watch the match, uh, they sat in this inn and they watched the match. This inn usually opened its main door at 6 o'clock in the evening. But uh, whenever there were matches, it kept the door, the back door open. Right from the afternoon, the back door used to be open and the people, the villagers, whoever used to come, they used to come from the back door. And after 6 o'clock, the main door used to be open. Coming to the fourth point, Ogilvy, who is bowling now, batting or Sexton and Postman, bowling, Ogilvy is bowling, uh, Sexton is batting. Sexton is said to be a man of iron muscle, he is said to be a man of iron muscle, Dash is a man of iron muscle, Sexton or you can say Mr. Hakut. He is strong because uh, he does digging work in the church, he is said to be strong because he does the digging work. He hit the ball so hard that it flashed like a thunderbolt. Like what? Thunderbolt. It goes to a man in blue jumper. He falls back with a huge cry. The fieldsmen are standing back in a cluster group. In a, glow, in a group, the fieldsmen are standing in a cluster. These are not coached players. These are working somewhere else but now because there is a match they all have gathered and they are playing. So they don't know exactly how to play a cricket match. So here uh, the ball goes to the man in the blue jumper. He falls back with a huge cry. The fieldsmen are standing in cluster. They are standing back in a cluster. There stood the mighty boon. There was no chance of escape for him. The ball hit Mr. Boone at his midriff like a thunderbolt. So, the ball hit the midriff like a thunderbolt. There was a sound like a drum. His big belly when it goes and hits. Boone holds his midriff and found the ball to be on its way. He looked at the ball for some time and threw it down angrily and started massaging the injured spot. Very badly he was hit, he had pain. So he gets angry, he throws the ball and he starts massaging the spot. Here he had taken one wicket. Though he was in pain, the one good thing which he did was he had caught the ball and he had taken the wicket. It was a catch. Since Boone had taken one wicket, all the players ran to congratulate him. Donald walked to him to congratulate Boone. 
stared at him as he was in pain boon stared at him as he was in pain boon said that he did not want to catch the ball he said the darned thing the darned thing means damn this ball he said he was hurt saying what to catch one ball i am hurt here so badly so donald says whatever he had taken a wicket which was very much needed for the team so the other players are not bothered of his pain but they are very happy to see that there's one wicket they have taken one wicket boon says blast the team donald now goes back to his place so boon is still angry though he has taken a wicket he is not very happy because he is in pain here in this paragraph we can see that players the other players all are happy but boon uh, that boon has taken one wicket but uh, boon is not uh, so happy because uh, he is in pain coming to point number 10 so here we have covered point 4 to 9 coming to point 10 again scores are equal or real also we had scores equal now again scores equal equal means level but uh, one more wicket was needed the last man the last man the last man left out for batting was blacksmith he was injured blacksmith he was injured so he needed another runner for help because he could not run he was injured so he takes baker with him so that he'll hit the ball and baker will run for him instead of him baker will run so he took baker with him to play blacksmith holds the shoulder of baker he has to enter the field so he holds the shoulder and he goes limping in the field he has to bat so for batting he holds the shoulder of mr baker he takes the support of mr baker and he moves to the field he was in great pain he took a look around savagely so when he went to that spot where he had to bat he goes and he just takes one a look around he just observed the fielders the fielders who all stood for fielding he observed them and he was just thinking how he could take runs coming to point 11 blacksmith hits the very first ball wildly wildly here he means he hits the ball hard he hits the ball so hard that the ball goes up at an enormous height very high the ball goes it went up and up it almost couldn't be seen against the deep cloudless blue sky so so hard he hit the ball so wildly he hit the ball that it went up and up it rose and rose the ball seemed to hang motionless in the air it stood like a hawk in the air hawk means a bird like eagle you, you find eagle or vultures flying at a great height eagle flies at a greater height so he says hawk the ball seemed to move like a hawk rise up and up higher and higher according to newton's law of gravitation what newton's law of gravitation says when an object is thrown on the top it come it has to fall back to the ground why because of force of gravitation the gravitation pull it has to come back so here according to newton's law of gravitation every object that is thrown up has to reach the ground the ball seemed to fight against this law of gravitation why the ball which was hit it was not coming down it was going higher and higher so it is said that it was moving against the law of gravitation the ball moved up but finally it had to come back the ball began to slow down towards the ground however high the object goes it has to come back it has to come and fall on the ground so finally it had to come back the ball began to slow down towards the ground here we can see the fear 
and the hopes of the English team. They had hopes that it may be a four, it may be a six. Hopes were there that they will win. Fear was also there that they may lose. So this is point number eleven. Coming to point number twelve. Uh, in the earlier eleven points, we saw how the ball in the air, in especially in the eleventh point, we saw how the ball in the air was being explained to move higher and higher. But uh, now we shall see certain funny things happening on the ground. Blacksmith was injured. Had Baker for help. He had. Uh, Baker for his help so that he hit the ball and Baker will run. But now he forgets that he had a sprain. Blacksmith forgets that he has a sprain in his leg. He forgets that and he begins to run after he hits the ball. He forgets that he had Baker for help. He starts running as soon as he hits the ball. He is, he forgets that he is injured. He forgets that is, there is Baker for his help. He calls Joe, the postman. Joe is the postman. He calls Joe and says, "Come on, Joe." Baker, who was running for blacksmith, is also running because he was doing his duty. Baker was doing his duty. He had come to help a blacksmith. So whenever blacksmith would hit the ball, he had to run. So he kept running. Blacksmith kept running. Joe kept running from the other side. They all looked like a pair of hackneys. Hackneys are horses. Hackneys are the horses. So they looked like a pair of hackneys. How a pair of horses run with high speed. So also blacksmith and baker seemed to run to make the runs. So from one side there was blacksmith, baker who were running like a pair of hackneys. And the other side, there was a Joe, the postman, who runs, saying, "What Joe says now? Come on, Bill. We can see this picture on page number forty-three of your textbook. On page number forty-three, there is a small picture given in the textbook, and we can see three of them. Those three: blacksmith, baker, and Joe. Joe glances at the ball and runs. Blacksmith, baker." very naturally very naturally they run with their heads turned not only upwards but also backwards as well so once they are seeing where the ball is once they see the backward whether they have thrown the ball and they are moving they are running so with such a speed to make runs so this the whole scene can be seen in point number 12 halfway down the pitch the three who are the three the blacksmith the baker joe they all met with a clang a dash they all dashed one another all three fell down the author here in this tries to compare their falling the falling down of blacksmith baker and joe these three will fall down to the ground so the author compares their falling to the falling hopes of the people of england he compares their falling to the falling hopes of the people of england all the hopes of the village fell with the resounding fall of their three champions so these three were the their hope so they feel that when these three have fallen down it means that their hopes also have fallen coming to point number 13 here coming to the fielding side here also things were not so well the things were not so well even the fielders were facing certain problems they were, there was a doubt and confusion among warriors of fordenton and there was uncertainty and disorganization among ranks of invaders there was doubt confusion for the warriors of fordenton and there was uncertainty and disorganization among the ranks of invaders here the writer compares napoleon's trick of war napoleon the great emperor he tries to compare the trick of napoleon's war with the players 
Napoleon, uh, what he used to do? He used to gather all the soldiers. Napoleon, the emperor, used to gather all the soldiers at one place. He used to train them so well. And he used to be successful in each of his conquests. In each of his conquests, he would uh, occupy the position very nicely, the possession of the place. He used to occupy gathering all the soldiers at one place. But could this trick, could this trick be followed in cricket? No. Here in cricket, all cannot gather at one place and become successful. They all have to stand at a distance for fielding. So here the author compares Napoleon's trick with this match here. But here in the game, success cannot be obtained if all the players gather at one place. So the author comments on this. Also the captain Mr. Hodge disagrees with the Emperor Napoleon's dictum. So his theory cannot be followed here. Mr. Hodge concludes that many fielders at a particular place at one place is of no use. It's not possible to catch the ball if all gather at one particular point or at one place. We observe that the two fielders had not come towards the ball. The all were running and uh, gathering at one place. But two of them did not leave their place. Who are they? The um, youth in the blue silk jumper and mighty Boone. Boone had not moved because he was more or less in the right place. The ball would likely fall at that place where he was standing. So he could judge. Boone judged that the ball will come to that place where he was standing. So he never moved from there. But he was ready and um, was ready to catch the ball. But uh, Boone was already injured. He was in great pain because the ball had hit him at the midriff earlier. Uh, Boone was ready but the other players were not sure that Boone will catch the ball. So, Mr. Uh, the Major, the Major who is there, the Major Hawker. He shouts, mine, mine and moves towards the ball to catch it. Mr. Harcourt, who was seeing the ball could now hardly see it. He simply runs around Mr. Boone and foolishly stands giggling at him. These people are not trained players. So he runs towards him and uh, he moves around Boone and simply smiles foolishly. Giggling means smiling, laughing. Another two players, Mr. Livingstone and the South Coat, approached towards the ball. They both moved as if they were in a competition to catch the ball, moving very fast. Either of them would catch the ball easily. Easily, both are running, anyone easily would catch the ball. But at the same time, captain saw both of them running towards the ball. He took a swift decision, a quick decision the captain took and said, Yours, Livingstone, you catch the ball. South Court hears this. Then South Court has to obey the orders of his uh, captain. So he remains still. But Hodge remembers the early game. Captain first he gives an order saying that Livingstone, you catch the ball. But uh, Hodge remembers the early game and feels that it is not correct to tell Livingstone to catch the ball. But he had to tell South Court. That would be the right decision. Immediately, he changes his decision. What the captain does? Immediately, he changes his decision and asks South Coot to catch the ball and says, Yours, Bobby. So, as per captain's order, South Coot moves to catch the ball. South Coot listens to the orders of his captain again and he moves to catch the ball. But what happens here is Livingstone whom the captain had ordered earlier to catch the ball, he did not hear captain's order. What Mr. Hodge said the second time, Livingstone did not hear it. Livingstone goes straight to catch the ball. He does not listen to the order of the captain. So point number 14. So we can see the confusion in uh, paragraph 13. We can see the confusion. Point 14. Meantime, Professor of Ballistics had made calculations. 
of his angles, velocities, the densities of air, barometer readings with the help of all this temperature he had arrived with the help of all these things angles, velocities, temperature, readings, barometer readings, the density of air with the help of all this he had arrived at the critical point and had marked that spot as X he had calculated that the ball would fall there. It was to the northeast of Boone. So where he had marked this X as per his calculation, it was to the northeast of Boone. Now, Professor moves towards that point, but Donald comes on his way. Professor dashes Donald and falls down. So you can observe in this cricket match that falling down is more than catching the ball taking the wicket. This is a funny thing in this cricket match. South Coot, who is running to catch the ball, tripped over Donald and was shot head first into Abraham like bosom of Boone, big stomach, Boone's big stomach. So here you can see the dashing, the falling down and all that. Boone stepped backward and came down with his spiked boot on the professor's toe. So he stamped the professor's toe with the spike shoes, so professor again was in pain. Wicket keeper, who was partly fat, so here in the cricket match, they should be thin and tall, but we can see all fat people here. The wicket keeper, who was partly fat, who is trying to catch the ball, pushes the professor from back. So the professor's state is like sandwich. Sandwich, a vegetable or a salad, uh, like onion, cucumber, tomato, in between two breads, two bread slices. So this is called a sandwich. So the professor state between the two fat ones and he like a sandwich in between. Both Boone and wicket keeper were fat. Professor was sandwiched between these two. So it's said twiddledum and twiddledy. So the state of professor is said to be twiddledum and twiddledy between two bread pieces. Loaves, there is a layer of maybe cheese, maybe onion and cucumber, or maybe vegetable. So to add more to the situation, Livingstone who came up with speed, dashed the professor, again dashing. So the condition of the professor is worst. First of all, he is sandwiched between Boone and the wicket keeper. Both are very fat. Now, again, somebody comes and dashes him. Livingstone comes and dashes him. He falls down. His condition is worsened. Mr. S. Pollock was alertly waiting to catch the ball. So here something is happening here. One dashing, the other falling down. There somebody is running to catch the ball. So point number 15. At last, ball came down to Mr. Hodge. Now, Mr. Hodge feels that Newton's law of gravitation seemed to be true. So finally, when the ball comes down, Mr. Hodge is telling that Newton's law of gravitation has come true. And also where uh, the ball landed to the X mark made by the professor, he had, marked a, um, he had marked a point saying X and he said that ball will come and fall there only. Ball fell there. The ball fell on Boone's head. It bounced and fell back near the wicket keeper. Shakespeare Pollock now catches the ball before it fell down. Now match was a tie. There was a tie. Nobody was the winner here. Mr. Hodge, the blue, the youth in the blue jumper, Mr. Pollock, all knew about the catch. Other players did not realize this. The two batsmen and the runner who had fallen down earlier now managed themselves to go back to their places. They realized the error they made, the mistake they made. Here comparison is made with the Russian Troika. What is a Russian Troika? It's a Russian cart drawn by horses. It's a Troika. Troika is a Russian cart which is drawn by the horses. Now all three but now all three running was of no use. All the three were running, but it was of no use because Pollock had already caught the ball. Now the match was a tie. So point number 16. Finally, both the teams came to the 
three horse shoes in the inn where all the elderly people were sitting and watching the match so the players when there is a tie in the match they come there and coming to point number 16 finally both the teams came to the three horse shoes inn three horse shoes inn in the evening and they spent their evening there mr hakut made a speech in italian language so this is a this is also a funny thing mr hakut has made a speech in what language italian language he has made a speech about what the glory of england when he is telling about the english when he is telling about england he can make this speech in english but he did not do it in english the glory of english was told in italian language this is also a funny incident later he well, fell asleep in a corner donald goes to his home the royal avenue by 10 o'clock in the morning he feels that he had not learnt much about english because it was told in italian language uh, he feels that he had not learnt much about the english from his experience of the national game thus ends the story of the cricket match between the two teams and thus ends this lesson hope you all have understood the summary of the lesson keep the textbook before you and go on referring point wise you will surely understand coming to the examination point of view the questions may be like name the two teams the english and the scottish you can write or the invaders and the warriors of odendon who are referred to as a pair of hackneys why did sexton and postman not take a risk of making runs why was boon angry what a fatal mistake did a hodge make how did pollock finally catch the ball the seventh question who won the match nobody won the match there was a tie the three mark questions may be like the approach of sexton postman and blacksmith baker to the game is a typical of their professions elaborate you have to explain about these characters short notes on a status quo episode this is a three mark question pick out the humorous situations many humorous situations are there so falling down dashing all those so the reference to context is maybe like i didn't want to catch the darned thing the ball hit his midriff and he scolds he says i didn't want to catch this darned thing the second rc may be like uh, the thunderbolt struck him in the midriff like a red hot cannon ball so this is for reference to context so this is all about a village cricket match thank you hope you all have understood this lesson do like share and subscribe